Now I'd like to talk about vector, va vector valued functions, also known as space curves. And these are really no different from parametric curves, which you've seen hopefully in another class. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about plotting these and also applying calculus operations to these. The, the main point here is that most of the calculus operations are straightforward. You just apply them to each component of a vector valued function and things work out fine. But the one most important detail is the idea of tangent vector, which I'll get to eventually. But a space curve or a vector valued function, we write this way. We have We have this function with three components. So you think of this, you think of t as time. And for each time, we're, we're specifying a point in space. So you think of this as, uh, as a fly going through space. So at each given time, we have a point, and, and this traces out a curve. Something like this. And I'm using the vector notation, but I don't really need to. I'm thinking every, of everything here as a position vector. So at each given time, I'm moving along. Well, we've already seen one example of, of a space curve, namely a line. say, for example, so as, it, as we've already seen, this is a line with direction vector 1, 2, 3, and it contains the point negative 1, negative 2, 5. And let me just write this out in components. If we do the arithmetic, we get that the first component is t minus 1, comma, 2t minus 2, comma, 3t plus 5. So as I wrote it before, this first piece would be x of t, this would be y of t, and this would be z of t. We can also use this ijk notation so I could write this as t minus 1 times i plus 2t minus 2 times j plus 3t plus 5 times k. But this is just another way of writing the same thing. Well, before I do anything too fancy, let me, let me give an example in two dimensions, which is the unit circle. You've probably already seen this, but the way we can write the unit circle in two dimensions is cosine of t comma sine of t. I mean, that's what trig functions do for us. They, for any given value of t, that gives tells us we're thinking of that as an angle and cosine of an angle comma sine of that angle specifies a point on the unit circle. And again, writing this with the i and j notation, we have that. So this isn't a space curve, it's a plane curve, but I'm just doing something in two dimensions first. Well, so when t equals zero, we have r of 0 is 1 comma 0. So we start at this point, let's say, at r of pi over 4, or at square root of 2, square root of 2. Nothing fancy is going on here. We're just moving around the unit circle in the usual way. But this illustrates that these these types of curves definitely do have a direction. If we start at t equals 0 and pick larger values of t, we move around the circle this way. 
I could move around the other way if I wrote down this function, with this one, uh, I start moving this way instead. So now here, here's a three-dimensional example. Um, which is not too much different from the thing I just showed you, but it actually looked kind of interesting. So what does this thing look like? The x and y components just give you the unit circle again, but z is equal to t, which we're thinking of as time. So we're tracing out the unit circle, but the height that we're at is equal to time in some sense. So if we, if we forget about z completely, we'll just be tracing out the unit circle, but we have to keep in mind that as, as t changes, we're moving up. So we get, we get this spiral shape. And if we move backwards in time, the spiral goes down. So this is worth thinking about. Uh, you might not grasp this immediately, but uh, you should think about why this is the shape that we get.